since I was a child, I've been fascinated by the idea of dinosaurs. But I never really thought about them having a connection with Britain. And yet, amazingly, this country was once a paradise for dinosaurs. With over 50 species discovered across the UK, Britain was a real-life Jurassic Park. Britain used to be home to the world's most terrifying predators. Raptors, tyrannosaurs, and flying reptiles, pterosaurs. Now I'm on an adventure millions of years in the making, revealing the truth about how this country's dinosaurs lived, fought, ate, and died. In a time when Britain was ruled by dinosaurs. spotting the famous Nessie without a whole lot of luck. But go back more than a hundred million years and real monsters were everywhere in Britain. Dinosaurs have been discovered across England, Wales and right here in Scotland. an extinct marine reptile. Even Loch Ness didn't exist when these were alive, but in the seas around Jurassic Britain, these huge predators were as real and as common as dolphins and seals are today. These monster reptiles grew up to 50 feet, more than eight times bigger than me. Plesiosaurs had large, deep-set teeth for trapping fish and dismembering prey. They were one of the ocean's top predators. A hundred and sixty-five million years ago, Scotland looked very different from today. It would have been flatter with a hot, humid climate and freshwater lagoons teeming with life. I've come to the Isle of Skye on a mission to uncover the hidden story of Britain's dinosaur past. Now, many of the rocks here in Scotland were formed long before the age of the dinosaurs, so scientists used to see this part of Britain as a bit of a lost cause when it came to dinosaur finds. But in 1982, that changed forever when evidence of the first Scottish dinosaurs were discovered right here on Skye. And that was just the beginning. The Isle of Skye lies off the west coast of Scotland, 130 miles from Edinburgh. This remote island has fast become one of the most exciting dinosaur hunting hotspots in Britain. With a dramatic coastline stretching over a thousand miles, much of Skye is still uncharted territory for dinosaur hunters. And it's not just bones that have been discovered. Other evidence has emerged of dinosaurs living in Scotland. To find out more, I'm meeting Dean Lomax on Ancoran Beach. At 25, Dean might not look like the stereotypical paleontologist, but he's already discovered and named an entirely new species of ichthyosaur, a prehistoric reptile. Hello, Dean. Hey, Lee. Good to see you again. Yeah, you too. What's all this? This is a dinosaur footprint here. No way, that's yeah, a dinosaur print. It is. See the three toes here? God, that's cool. This was made about 150, 165 million years ago by a big meat-eating dinosaur. That is brilliant. 
This footprint suggests a big theropod of about 15, 20 feet in length, quite an animal. How can you be sure, though, that that's a dinosaur print? How was that made and, and left here? Yes, yeah, so this animal, this dinosaur, had been walking along the beach, leaving its footprints in this sort of muddy coastal region. And over time, that mud would have hardened and been baked by the sun and then turned to stone. And then that's how they've been left here. So this is the footprints of giants? It is. We are literally standing in the same bed that dinosaurs were walking on 165 million years ago. That's amazing. Yeah. Dean, that was incredible to see the footprints of dinosaurs here now, today. Yeah, I mean, that's a great example, and there's plenty others across the sky on various different beaches. The more eyes down to the floor looking at this material, in another 10, 15 years, who knows what could be discovered. A remarkable set of tracks found here in 2002 shows more than 20 individual footprints. Belonging to a theropod or meat-eating dinosaur, the prints are from an adult and juveniles, suggesting these creatures lived in family groups. The adult theropod measured around 11 feet long, but it would have been dwarfed by a type of dinosaur that roamed ancient Scotland and other parts of Britain 165 million years ago. I'm heading to Skye's Staffin Museum, where Dean has lined up a big surprise. It's not our normal museum, is it, this? It's not. Wait till you see the inside. Has it got a cafe? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> wow. This is huge. Yeah, this is a massive bone from the biggest animals that used to walk the planet. The sauropod dinosaurs, the long-necked, long-tailed dinosaurs, and this is just uh, the upper arm bone. The biggest animals ever to walk on Earth. Absolutely. <laughs> How much did they weigh? Some of these dinosaurs, they, they may have uh, been about 40 tons, about the weight of 10 African elephants. Incredible weight. These would have been uh, earth shakers. Do you think they were really shaking the ground? I'm pretty sure they would, yeah. These are huge, huge animals. The massive limb bone suggests this type of sauropod, called Cetiosaurus, grew up to 65 feet long the same as two double-decker buses. What did they think when they discovered it? So the first guy to examine bones such as this, the chap Sir Richard Owen, a guy who uh, named the word dinosaur, he thought they were so big they belonged to something that clearly couldn't sustain its body weight on, on land. He thought it belonged to some sort of whale-like reptile, and then it must have lived in, in swamps. So the water would support its weight? That's exactly it, yeah. So he didn't think it was a dinosaur. with more discoveries, you realise that actually these bones, despite their size, are essentially hollow. The animals have a system of air sacs, so these are able to sustain this massive weight on land. Amazingly, these gigantic beasts hatch from eggs similar in size to those of an ostrich. Many birds today, sauropods swallowed stones to help crush their food and aid digestion. Some of these giant dinosaurs needed to consume around 100,000 calories a day, the equivalent of 450 slices of vegetarian pizza. The mighty sauropods, gentle giants amongst dinosaurs, and the biggest animals ever to have walked the earth. Next, I come face to face with a pint-sized predator. <laughs> and discover that Britain was home to an ancient ancestor of the terrifying T-Rex. On a journey round Britain discovering the secrets of the towering herbivores and the killer carnivores that once roamed this land. Over 50 different species of dinosaur have been discovered so far, but not all of them were as big as the enormous sauropods. See, when most people think of dinosaurs, they think of these huge, massive animals. But these, these are really tiny. <laughs> this one was found right here on Sky. <laughs> Look at the size of that. That's tiny. Now, that is a very small footprint, and in fact, it's the smallest in the Western world. It's really small. It's amazing. It's amazing. The animal that made that was probably about 20 centimetres in length. Do you know which dinosaur it was? 
it's probably, look at the footprint type, it's probably a uh, theropod, so a tiny meat eater, and it's meant to be uh, a post hatchling. Gosh, so very small, but can still have the tip of your finger off. Oh, I'm sure it would do, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Amazing. But take a look at this one. Ooh. This, very careful to take it out. But take a look at that. Ah. Incredible. Now, that is a portion of jaw, just a lower jaw, of a dinosaur called a Echinodon. This was found on the Isle of Purbeck. What, what can this tell you about the dinosaur itself? So it has two types of teeth in its jaw. It has molar-like teeth and uh, canine-like teeth. And we think that perhaps the Canadon may have been omnivorous, so feeding on plants and animals, and probably insects too, so quite, quite unique. How big would it have been? No, no bigger than a cat or a dog. Echinodon's name means hedgehog tooth, thanks to its spiky teeth. Right. <laughs> Feeding on both plants and animals, Echinodon evolved to get its teeth into anything. Dinosaurs roamed the planet for over 165 million years. That's more than 850 times as long as modern humans have been on Earth. There were three ages of dinosaur. Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous. Over this mind-boggling amount of time, Britain's dinosaurs evolved. Some meat-eaters got bigger, while other dinosaurs developed new forms of defence. At the heart of dinosaur research in Britain is London's Natural History Museum. It was founded by Sir Richard Owen, the same man who invented the term dinosaur. Apart from the beloved Dippy, another huge favourite at the Natural History Museum is the animatronic T-Rex. T-Rex has only been found in North America, but the story of this monster meat-eater began right here in Britain. Amazingly, T-Rex is a direct descendant of one of Britain's own tyrannosaurs. expecting from T-Rex's great-great-grandfather. He must be about a quarter of the size. <laughs> this dinosaur, Proceratosaurus, roamed Britain 166 million years ago in the Jurassic period. Its descendant, T-Rex, lived just 66 million years ago in Cretaceous times, meaning it's actually closer to humans in time than it is to this British Tyrannosaur. Over millions of years, Tyrannosaurs gradually got larger and larger, eventually enabling them to take down massive beasts like this Triceratops. one of the world's leading tyrannosaur experts, evolutionary biologist Steve Brusatti. You can see the teeth from here. Yep, this is a tyrannosaur skull. That is absolutely incredible. This is where the great T-Rex comes from. This is the very oldest cousin of T-Rex, the very oldest tyrannosaur in the world. Incredible, where was this discovered? So this, believe it or not, not only is a very small primitive tyrannosaur, but it also is from Gloucestershire, of all places. Yeah. <laughs> where you're from, yes, I understand. From. <laughs> what would it have looked like? We don't have all of it preserved. So the bones have kind of sheared off right up here. So there would have been more bones, and the brain kind of would have been over here. The eye would have been here. The nostril would have been over here. So you can see the basic outlines of the skull. But this was a dinosaur smaller than, than me. And I'm not a very big guy, so this was a very, very humble dinosaur. It was not a top-of-the-food-chain type of animal. The story of Tyrannosaurus over millions of years of evolution is extraordinary. T-Rexes, I know it's 
a cliche, but it is my favorite dinosaur. I think for many people, it's our favorite dinosaur just because it, it's so big. The biggest meat eater on land today is a polar bear. So, you know, T-Rex could have just swatted a polar bear away. So it, it's a fantastic animal. There's features here that, yeah, even though it's smaller than T-Rex and much older, features that are only seen in T-Rex, things like the nasal bones are fused up, or there's these tiny little um, nipping teeth at the front of the jaw. You can just see how the teeth at the front are really, really, really tiny compared to the ones on the side. That's a Tyrannosaur feature. What might it have been eating? Well, we think that these kind of Tyrannosaurs were eating small animals, small mammals, some of our very earliest relatives, small little lizards, small little amphibians, but they weren't at the top of the food chain. That came much later, about 80 million years after Proceratosaurus lived, when the other dinosaurs that were at the top of the food chain, for some reason, went extinct. And we don't really know why. Tyrannosaurs took advantage, and they grew to huge sizes, and they ascended to dominance. Tyrannosaurs had this long history, and only right at the end did they become big. And then they were top of the food chain, king of the world, king of the dinosaurs. And it all begins with this dinosaur right here in front of us. It's fascinating. The Natural History Museum has the largest collection of dinosaurs in the country, but London isn't Britain's dinosaur capital. There's one place in Britain where more dinosaurs have been found than anywhere else in Europe. It's become known as Dinosaur Island, and that's where I'm heading now. The Isle of Wight is located two miles off the mainland, with many rocks dating back to Cretaceous times. 130 million years ago, southern Britain was much hotter than today with extreme weather, floods and drought. The flood season created swamps. When dinosaurs died, the wet and boggy landscape provided ideal conditions for preserving their remains. Today, the south coast of the island is constantly eroding into the sea. As the cliffs crumble, they expose fresh rock, revealing new evidence of dinosaurs. I'm meeting amateur fossil hunter Nick Chase to take a look at some of the most remarkable finds to come out of these cliffs in recent years. Hey Nick. Hey, hello Ellie. Can you see anything unusual? <laughs> no, nothing unusual. What about this one? Oh my goodness, it's never a print, is it? Wow, which animal made this? It's so uh, big. You can't be 100% certain, but almost Without doubt, it was uh, very large. Iguanodon. This is just an individual one, and it's not in situ. It's actually been eroded from that sandstone layer, <gasps> and then the sea's washed it over here. And you can find these anywhere along here. Incredible. You wouldn't want one treading on your toes, I don't think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, we're going to see if we can find some more. Good stuff. Since 2013, an intriguing new dinosaur skeleton has been emerging from the cliffs, bone by bone. Three very impressive vertebrae here. I've been collecting this specimen for over two years. Wow. As it's gradually eroding out of the cliffs. Talk me through the finds you've got so far. Yeah, this is a beauty, really. Wow! This is exactly as it came out and ended up on the beach. Ah. It's from the tail. Gosh! These fossilised bones come from a sauropod dinosaur, the biggest animals ever to have roamed Britain. What about these other pieces? This one is a vertebrae from the neck quite long, and this is in two pieces. <laughs> it's all joined together there. That's oh, it. Yeah. it broke up when it fell out of the cliffs. Um, but that's from the back. One thing this does show quite well is some of the internal structure. Ah, and yeah. you can see the black lines, the actual bone itself, and they're surrounding these enormous great big air cavities. So it was not so heavy. That's right, if all the bones in the neck were solid, it would never get its head off the ground. No. So it had to have these huge cavities to make it light enough to lift its head. There's another kind of fossil that helps us get to the bottom of the eating habits of dinosaurs. I've got this to show you. I don't know if you know what this is. There you are. It's not a bone, is it? No, but it, it is what it looks like. <laughs> it, it's, it looks like a piece of poo. It is. And that's what it's it a, is. It's a, it's a coprolite, a piece of fossilised dung. How do you know that that's what it is? Um, it's shape, it's, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's quite a good indicator. Also, what it's made of. They can be analysed and they contain a lot of phosphate. Right. And also, sometimes, you can actually see bits of bone and fish scales really? sticking out from them. 
It's um, very big though, is it? Considering that is how not big the dinosaurs big. I've got a slightly larger one in my bag. That's a much bigger piece. More of a decent size. But could easily, for someone like me, be mistaken for a pebble. It is, but with a bit of experience, you can tell, in fact, that it's, it's quite different from the beach pebbles that you get around here. Mm. Um, it's, it's made of a different material, and it's quite heavy for its size. It really in is. a certain density. So this would have come from a, a meat eater? Probably. Marathon? Probably most of these, the coprolites that we actually find are from meat eaters. Um, and you can, in fact, see some slightly darker patches inside this, and they're probably bits of bone. Wow from the last meal of this animal. But they are rarer than, than bone. There you go, fossilised dino poo. Next, I come face to face with an armoured stegosaur. Get a sneak preview of Britain's latest dinosaur discovery, a brand new species of meat eater from Wales. And uncover evidence of a deadly dinosaur battle. You can imagine these being bite marks made by one of those big predatory dinosaurs involving a 30-foot hunter who preyed on other dinosaurs, the ferocious neo -Venator. I'm on a journey around Britain, finding evidence of this country's hidden dinosaur past. Amazingly, more than a dozen different dinosaurs have been found here on the Isle of Wight, including mighty sauropods. Each bone furthering our understanding of what life was like in dinosaur Britain. Evidence on the Isle of Wight found that during Cretaceous times, 130 million years ago, Britain was a real dog-eat-dog, -dog, or dinosaur-eat-dinosaur -dinosaur world. In 1978, the fossilised bones of two dinosaurs began to emerge from the same Cretaceous cliffs. It took 18 years for all the bones to appear. These remarkable skeletons show evidence of a ferocious fight for survival. I've come to Dinosaur Isle Museum to meet paleontologist Darren Naish, who has conducted a forensic analysis on this dinosaur crime scene. What's the story of their discovery? So both of these animals were found literally with their bones jumbled together. But what's really interesting is that they preserve an extraordinary number of features that tell us exactly what happened during their lives. The largest of the two skeletons belongs to a ferocious flesh-eating dinosaur called Neovenator. What was Neovenator like? So Neovenator would have been an awesome, giant, scary carnivore, basically. This is an animal with fairly long uh, arms, big three-clawed hands. It has a narrow, very deep skull, numerous large serrated teeth. It's a giant predator that's going to be grabbing things with its hands before moving in and making numerous horrible slashing bites. Quite a nasty, uh, efficient predator. Fast? About as fast as you or I, which is fast enough to catch big dinosaurs, yeah, so pretty fast. Our second skeleton belongs to a plant eater called Mantellisaurus. So Mantellisaurus, a large, rotund, bodied herbivore. You should imagine it as having a, a long, almost horse-like head, but with a bird-like beak at the end. And a weird thing about it is it had a giant conical thumb spike on its hand, which was maybe used as a weapon to defend itself from predators like Neovenator. So a weird kind of parrot-faced, horse-skulled, thumb-spiked, big <laughs> uh, plant-eating dinosaur. Like elephants or bison today, Mantellosaurus probably lived in herds for protection against predators. What are the pathologies on these two individuals? So we see numerous things that clearly happen during the lives of these animals. First, our flesh-eating Neovenator. <laughs> this weird-looking bone here, this is from the underside of the animal's belly. And what seems to have happened here is that this particular belly rib has been broken in half and it hasn't fused back to its other half. But there's all this weird, gnarly extra bone texture, which shows the animal was growing extra bone, presumably to try and heal that injury. If we look at the foot of Neovenator, this giant, beautiful, like, bird-like foot, if you look at one of the claw bones here, you can see this like blunted end mm. with this like overgrowth of bone over the tip here. This is not normal compared to a normal claw that we have right there. Uh huh. What could it's, have happened? Well, it looks as if it's literally stubbed its toe oh. <laughs> while running. What else has this one got? Well, if we look at the two tail vertebrae here from the Neovenator, we think that something affected the cartilage disc in between the, the two vertebrae here, hence this new bone growth. And this means the animal grew this in response to some kind of injury. Next up, our plant eater. 
Mantellosaurus? The strangest thing we see in the Mantellosaurus is if we look at one of the vertebrae here, one of the bones from the backbone, this giant weird loop of bone, which is absolutely not normal for these dinosaurs. The spine should normally be somewhat taller. But it doesn't look very comfortable. Exactly. If you compare it with a normal one, from the same animal, from the same individual, you should see this normal rectangular shape to the top of the neural spine. This has meant that the individual was uh, in pain and more likely to be preyed on. It's quite plausible. If you can imagine having parts of your backbone snapped off, Ooh. moved around in your body and then fused back... It's going to hurt. A final piece of evidence is the most compelling proof that neo preyed on this one-ton herbivore. <laughs> What have we got in terms of battle scars in front of us? So we have obvious tooth marks on one of the bones from the top of the spine. You can see these large score marks. Wow, fantastic. It's really hard to imagine what they could be unless they are bite marks made by the teeth of a big predator like Neovenator. This is a Neovenator tooth. We can imagine these being bite marks. You'll notice that there's no evidence that this animal was healing, so this happened either as it died or after the time of death. <laughs> As tragic as it was for these animals and as much pain as they must have been in, these pathologies allow us to tell a story more than a, a pristine bone. That's exactly right, and they give us an exceptional insight into the life histories of these two animals. Fascinating. Thanks to evidence found less than 40 years ago in these Isle of Wight cliffs, we can now piece together amazing details about the lives of two dinosaurs 130 million years after they died. Dinosaur Britain, only the strongest survived. I'm heading back to London's Natural History Museum to discover another world first for Britain. A plant-eating dinosaur that evolved the perfect self-defence against meat-eating predators. I'm meeting paleontologist Dean Lomax at what he says is the most important stegosaur fossil ever discovered. Why this one, then, Dean? Well, so, so many people walk straight past this specimen without realising its true significance to paleontology. Why is it significant? Well, this is not only the very first substantial stegosaur to be found in Britain, but the very first substantial stegosaur to be found in the world. So it was a big deal? It was a very big deal, yeah. It sounds like it's got some personal meaning for you, this one. Yeah, well, growing up, I was fascinated by all types of different dinosaurs, and I remember seeing a picture of this specimen, and uh, it just sparked my imagination. There was something so big and monstrous. Yeah. What's the story of its discovery? So this was found around about May 1874 by a bunch of workers in Swindon, would you believe? And they found lots and lots of bones. They thought they weren't quite sure what they were. So they wanted the very eminent paleontologist, Sir Richard Owen, to come and look at these bones. Owen was contacted, and then he realised that these were something brand new to, uh, to science, to paleontology, brand new dinosaur to add to the ever-growing list of dinosaurs named by Owen. So brilliant discovery. You're going to have to describe this to me. That jumble of bones doesn't help. Can you describe to me how it would have looked? Yeah, so this huge block here at the, the bottom, that is the pelvis. This long element here is the femur, the thigh bone. All these little bones here dotted around as a vertebrae. Now, the size of this animal is probably between six and nine metres in length, so quite, quite a big animal. So I imagine the head would have been about here. If you follow it all the way back along its back, you get quite high up, quite a high, high back. At the top of the back, you've had this basically armour plating. They have lots of different types of plates. And before we get to the end, there's something quite special about stegosaurs, which is really iconic, I think, is what brings their name. And that is this specimen, which is <laughs> a tail spike, an original specimen which belongs to this here on the wall. Wow! It's incredible. That is a sizable spike. That's got to be a serious weapon. It is a massive, massive uh, weapon. These would have been used on the, uh, the tail of stegosaurs. It would have swung its tail side to side 
this immense spike as a form of defense against predators. And it would have fit probably somewhere like this, quite high up on the, uh, on the tail of this animal. An impressive weapon indeed. Wow, what a wonderful discovery. This species of stegosaur is called Dacentrurus, meaning very sharp tail. While the stegosaur's tail spikes clearly evolved for defense, paleontologists have put forward a number of theories about the purpose of the plates on its back, from a show of force to an ingenious cooling system, or to attract mates. Stegosaur fossils are normally found alone rather than in groups, suggesting they may have lived solitary lives. Weighing up to five tons, the armor-plated Dacentrurus, one of the largest stegosaurs in the world. Next, I travel to the National Museum of Wales to track down Britain's newest dinosaur discovery, a small, but deadly meat-eater with razor-sharp teeth. Dinosaurs have been discovered all across Britain, each find furthering our understanding of these awe-inspiring creatures. Many of the dinosaurs that have been discovered here were found by amateur enthusiasts and ordinary families who happened upon a piece of bone or tooth or even a footprint while out on the beach. The ferocious Baryonyx, found by an amateur fossil hunter in a Surrey clay pit. The pint-sized Echinodon on the Isle of Purbeck on the south coast. And the armor-plated Scalidosaurus, an ancient ancestor of the Stegosaur on a Dorset beach. As Britain is an island, there are dinosaur hunting hotspots along much of the coastline. I'm heading to the Jurassic Coast, a World Heritage Site famed for its fossils. I'm joining an organised amateur fossil hunt with paleontologist Dean Lomax. What might we find today, then? Well, we might find some ammonites, belemnites, which are extinct type of squid. If we're lucky, we might find even some marine reptiles, maybe even a piece of dinosaur. That would be a good day, right? That would make my day. <laughs> what do you need? First, good geological hammer or rock hammer. Nice. Which is great to have. And a couple of uh, brick chisels. And of course, we need some safety glasses or goggles to protect your, uh, protect your eyes. Dean's already spotted a promising looking rock. There we go, moment of truth. The flat, round shape of this stone suggests it may contain a fossil. That's what we get. Well, might have something at least. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. That's not too bad. That's a lovely specimen. It's beautiful. Our first find of the day an ammonite, a prehistoric relative of the octopus. The ideal time to search is after a storm, when winds, rain and rough seas may have exposed new fossils. Try and take this side up so you can find any more. Ooh. That's something different. What's that? Oh wow, that's a fish. They're really rare from here. Wow, that is... that's really exciting, yeah, isn't that's, it? That's brilliant. Gosh, there's some the real well detail. Yeah. This fish swam in the warm seas around Britain 195 million years ago. Finding a fossil like this is the best experience for any fossil hunter, just for the reason that you are the very first person to ever see that. The safest time to search for fossils is at low tide and avoid the base of cliffs in case of rock falls. I've been lucky today and found a piece myself. Have you? Yes, sir. What am I looking at there? So that's the backbone from an so This group are from the UK amateur fossil hunters who hold regular events across Britain. How have these very young paleontologists been doing? Lovely. What have you found? You found what? Bellum knights. Oh, well done. See, the cool thing about these is, well, these are bellum knights, so yeah. squid-like animals, but originally a lot of people thought these were dinosaur teeth. Another ammonite there. Well done. Thank you. The group's best finds come from two marine reptiles that would have dominated the waters when dinosaurs ruled the land. What's this? I think an ichthyosaur bird spray. God. That's a great find. <laughs> this is a good one. This is a marine reptile. <laughs> yes, it is from an ichthyosaur, a fish lizard. 
Ichthyosaurs look similar to modern dolphins, but they could grow up to 50 feet long. Ichthyosaurs were first identified from fossils found here on the Jurassic coast. What's this one? What we think that is from the plesiosaur. We actually think it's part of the flipper. It's quite a rare find from down here. How old will that be then? It'd be about 195 million years old, approximately. Plesiosaurs had four large paddles, which they used to power themselves through water faster than an Olympic swimmer. Yeah, an aminoid. They died out when the dinosaurs died 65 million years ago. <laughs> Start small. And if you're lucky enough to find something really special, get in touch with your local museum. It might just be a dinosaur. That's my day one. It's yep, not bad, got, is it? Two aminoids. Uh, you got to pass out the toothpaste there. It's kind of bellonite. I'm getting quite addicted to this, you know. <laughs> Don't want to stop. We've made some fantastic discoveries today, but I've heard of a truly spectacular new find. I'm on my way to Wales to see Britain's latest dinosaur discovery, a real-life Welsh dragon. It's a completely new species, the only skeleton of a meat-eating dinosaur ever discovered in Wales. And it's so new, it doesn't even have a name yet. The amazing discovery was made at Cliffs in Lavernock, five miles from Cardiff. Brothers Nick and Rob Hannigan found the extraordinary new specimen in a rockfall in March 2014. Nick and Rob's dinosaur will soon be on permanent display at the National Museum of Wales to join their collection of prehistoric skeletons and footprints. But I'm getting a sneak preview with paleobiologist Dave Martill, who believes this may be the earliest Jurassic dinosaur ever discovered. Good to meet you, Dave. Oh, hi, How Ali. How are you doing? Nice to see you. You too. Yeah, just looking at these bones at the wow. moment. Setting my eyes on this is a real privilege because very few people have seen these so far. Um, a handful of people. This is a completely new species of dinosaur, one of those little meat eaters, the ones we call theropods. How are you able to build up a picture of what this dinosaur looked like? We don't have all of the bones, but if we have a left arm bone, then we know what the right arm bone was because it was a mirror image. Really, we do have enough that when we've worked out what the bones are, we can put it together and we can work out what it looked like. And what I can say about this animal is that it was very, very slenderly built. It had a long tail, yeah. but it was very fierce, quick, agile, very, very good eyes, very tiny little teeth, but very sharp, and you really wouldn't have put your fingers in his mouth. <laughs> he, would, he, he would have drawn blood very, very quickly. He would have been like that, at prey, very, very fast, very, very lightly built. This is a nice little bone here. This is the roof of the brain case. So where my finger is now, that's where its little brain would have been. You can just feel what it was thinking when it died. <laughs> How did you deduce that this was a theropod? Ah, well, the clues are just there. <laughs> For instance, these teeth with very, very fine serrations are found in meat-eating dinosaurs. And then how did you figure out that this was a new species? First of all, no meat-eating dinosaur has been found in the Jurassic rocks of Wales before, yeah? So there's a very, very real chance it's going to be new anyway. But what you have to do is you have to compare it with every other meat-eating dinosaur from the same time period. So we just had to go through piles and piles of literature comparing every bone. And it looks similar to some dinosaurs, but then if the vertebrae look similar, you compare the pelvic bones and they're a bit different. So you think, oh, well, OK, well, it looks like that one, but it's not exactly. And you keep doing that until eventually you go, oh, it's new. a possibility of finding new species. Oh, all the time. And um, the more people that go out there and collect, then the more we're going to find. Britain's latest dinosaur discovery. A feisty three-foot meat-eater and a brand new species. This has been a truly incredible adventure, 200 million years in the making. The first dinosaur bone discovered anywhere in the world was right here in Britain. And it belonged to the mighty meat-eating Megalosaurus, a 30-foot predator who stalked prehistoric Oxford. With more teeth than T-Rex, Baryonyx was the world's first fish-eating dinosaur, hunting on the banks of Britain's ancient rivers. 
while flying pterosaurs ruled our skies. Britain was home to some of the biggest dinosaurs ever to walk the earth. The giant sauropods that roamed as far north as Scotland. Some of the smallest, with the spiny toothed echinodon discovered in Dorset. And even an ancient ancestor of the fearsome T Rex. I've discovered how dinosaurs hunted, what they ate, how they fought, and how they died. But the story of dinosaur Britain doesn't end here. And new discoveries are being unearthed to this day. And yet there are still unknown species out there all across Britain just waiting to be discovered. So go out there and get searching. Help or hindrance, we get the facts in cash in hand, payday loans next. While over on ITV2, Gordon Ramsay turns up the heat while turning the air blue in Hell's Kitchen. And our favourite shopkeeper's back for Series 3, it's Mr Selfridge next on ITV Encore.